So the Palatin people, specifically the Palatin men, are going to be doing a fair bit of hunting throughout the year, but largely hunting in the fall and winter months. Um, sometimes in singular hunts, one or two people, you know, sometimes in small group hunts, and then sometimes around what we would maybe consider November time frame, doing large communal hunts where they say the men of a town may kill 10, 15, 20, or 30 deer in just a morning, oftentimes many more than that over several days. They're going to be using a lot of different techniques and tools to hunt um, to aid them in their hunting. Um, but largely, although the Powhatan people are farmers at the point that the English arrive, they're farming, fishing, and gathering of many of the eastern woodlands tribes, keeping them sustained. The hunting may not be survival so much at the point that the English arrive. However, it is built on a tradition of thousands of years of native people in North America hunting originally for survival. And so you're going to see a tremendous amount of skill and time and effort dedicated to their ability with hunting. There's gonna be a lot of tools, some of which we think of and some of which we do not so regularly think of. They're gonna be used to help them get close to the animals, to bring the animals in, to bring the animals down, also to process them. And then the things that they're making from them are oftentimes just as important as any food that has gotten from hunting the animals. So some of the animals that we know the Palatin and other Eastern woodland tribes are hunting, some you might think of like deer, one of the most common, which they say that sometimes they carpet their houses with the fur. They'll be hunting bear, certainly, which the English reference as the Palatin favored meat that they almost never give to the colonists unless they have great things to offer. Turkey, like we certainly think of for Thanksgiving and other things like that in our more modern sense, but also animals you might not consider. Mountain lions, red wolves, elk and woodland bison, passenger pigeons, and squirrels and raccoons and rabbits, ducks and geese, just about everything with very few exceptions is going to be on the menu. Palatin men bringing them down largely with a bow and a set of arrows, kind of like these here, which we've covered in earlier videos and we'll hit very briefly here. So you'll see a variety in their arrows, and this is just a, a small sampling of it. Sharpened and blunted arrows of hardwoods likely, used mostly for small game, squirrels, rabbits, and the like. You'll move into bone, stingray spines, and antler, largely for fish and birds and medium game. And then for big game, you'll commonly see these stone points people think of as the only arrowheads. These are usually reserved for big game. Deer and bear, elk and woodland bison. And many of these arrows will come with an added feature that actually helps them bring down game reliably and quickly and preserve their arrow. You'll see many of them with interchangeable or replaceable heads. So the arrow might be used for several tasks, but it also means that the arrow, once it enters the animal, is likely to continue to do the work of bringing the animal down, but also to fall out at some point to preserve the arrow from breaking, to create a nice open hole so the animal goes down faster and leaves an easier trail to follow. So you've got your longbow and your arrows as your main tools for the hunting of the animals. The bow, which we've covered in other videos, being roughly the height of the archer, shooting right off of the knuckle, um, charting, starting training around five or six years old and developing a tremendous amount of skill. The English say shooting the birds from the air, the beasts as they run and fish as they swim. They say shooting a man of theirs right through and nailing his arms down. So the bow and the arrow are the key tools, but you're going to need other things, other skills and tools to get in close to the animals, which we'll hit here very briefly. So one of the most common overlooked things that the Palatin are going to be using, something as simple as this. This is not exactly the style of Palatin shoe or moccasin at the time, moccasin being an Algonquian or Palatin word, but they're soft-soled leather shoes that the native people are wearing and along with years of practice, they say, to ambush or sneak up on their enemy or prey. It's going to be very key in helping you close the distance while hunting. You will also see certain tools used to attract the animals. 
simple things like bait can be used. There are references up and down the East Coast to native men actually dressing themselves with a deer skin, the head and neck being stuffed like a puppet with fake eyes, put on a pole and they say they mimic the deer, they get in close and they shoot them at short range. So that certainly means you're likely to see decoys. And for certain animals like birds, decoys are almost a necessity, but oftentimes so are things like this. It's a wing bone turkey call. The English say the Powhatan men make a trumpet of the turkey's wing bones. In order to call in more. So decoys, bait, game calls. There are also references to camouflage being used um, up and down the east coast of men covering themselves with mud to break up their pattern. And specifically here, the Rappahannock tribe of Virginia, the English mentioned 40 of their warriors dressing themselves so convincingly as brush and bushes that the English appear to have been within bow range before they realized that the shrubs were actually 40 warriors along the banks of the river. So you've got camouflage, bait and disguises, decoys and things. You're also going to need tools to break the animals down, knives of cane and stone and all of that. But one key thing in our understanding of Powhatan and Native American hunting in the eastern woodlands, there's a lot that we are missing. Much of the archaeological record doesn't preserve things that we find in other places which are almost certainties here. For example, decoys for birds, like this little reed duck decoy are dated back to 2,000 years plus in the southwestern part of the country. And although they're almost certainly used here, and there are arguments that they are depicted, they don't survive archeologically, and so we can only guess as to exactly what they would have looked like. And so there are huge gaps in our knowledge of Powhatan hunting techniques, um, methods, and skill. Um, some of these things still being kept by the tribes of the Eastern Woodlands as passed down um, family skills and stories. Some of them recorded in English documents um, and others in the archeology. span So we work with what we have, but really and truly the Powhatan breadth of hunting um, is uh, fairly underrepresented in what we actually know today. And in later videos, we may cover more specific um, facets of their hunting, such as the use of canoes, game drives, dogs, torches, and fire and all, which are all parts of their communal hunts that we know of, where they'll bring down great numbers of deer rather than simply ambushing, uh, baiting, or using decoys to try and get in close for hunting. But the Powhatan are hunting all these animals for the materials as much as the meat, and so certainly a topic in our other videos and out on site here at Jamestown Settlement is that they're using the animals for furs and leather, antler and glue and bone and all different kinds of things. And there is also evidence for their use of certain uh, equipment to help them hunt in winter adverse conditions. References to using a lotion to keep body heat in in order to not have to wear big furs. And then also certainly references to shooting gloves like this one, um, which would be very beneficial if you are hunting in cold weather to keep the fingers that you actually use to pull the bowstring nice and warm and also arguably protecting those fingers from the bowstring. So those are kind of some basics and overviews of Powhatan hunting. The bow and the arrow being the key tools. Ones like war clubs, swords, and hatchets being used possibly to finish the animals after they've been um, shot or brought down. And then plenty of other smaller techniques and uh, tools being used just to close the distance in the first place. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed our video today. And if you did, uh, certainly remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below.